Hi everyone. So most of the time the question came uh, whenever I am training in uh, organization or maybe I am taking training online. So most of the time uh, people ask this question like what is the history of Spark? What is the history of Hadoop? Why big data technology came in picture? Okay, and how the evolution happened for the Databricks and Spark? So we'll talk about a uh, bit on this and I'll try to explain as much as uh, I got all the information so far because uh, it's almost time just playing around with all these things. Okay, so this is the agenda. We'll discuss all these topics, introduction to big data, history of Hadoop, history of Spark, an introduction to Databricks, history of Databricks. Okay, so this is all about me. My name is Gaurav. I am a data engineer, basically a data architect and corporate trainer, Databricks mentor. Apart from that, I am training uh, in multiple ETL tools, which is new to the market. So let's get started. What is big data? So whenever uh, we think like why why we need all these tools in the market out there like Databricks, Hadoop, Spark, why we need um, some Fivertron, why we need Snowflake. Earlier we used to use uh, SSIS, Informatica, all those tools, right? So we'll, we'll discuss. So what is big data? Which can crush Excel. So Excel can contain too much data, but big data is something way beyond this. Okay. So basically produced by multiple factors, multiple applications generating big data. So if I just ask you like one plane is flying from uh, maybe uh, from New Delhi to New York, how much data it's generating? It's generating almost a petabyte or more than a petabyte of data. Okay. So and it, it's not something uh, the term recently introduced in the market because plane is flying since i mean long back story so data is there but the system was not there and the keep i mean technology is keep on evolving right so earlier we used to process only data which is required right but now these days we get all the data and ai came in picture so most of the things in let's say running on autopilot right so it's keep on sending all the information like weather information the height of the plane okay and how's the uh, plane flying what is the weather condition everything let's say some some turbulence happening so that's data also came to the data center immediately with the batch not the batch system but with the stream system so real time data came to the system and it automatically processed like they can uh, automatically identify with the weather condition like what time could be taken by the flight or there could be some delay or not so so these are the third thing we have to focus on first thing is volume second thing is velocity third thing is variety volume is something where you are getting data you can you can call it uh, a larger data than the traditional system so let's say some rdbms system is capturing some data it's a uh, huge than that data that's a volume then we call velocity velocity is something like high speed it's continuously flowing like if you if i'll talk about today's you can see lots of apps are there netflix okay then Amazon Prime, there are Hotstar, there are ma many more applications which is uh, producing uh, the content, high definition content. There are lots of social media platform, Instagram, Net and um, LinkedIn, okay, TikTok, all these platforms generating data people are keep on posting. So let's say some uh, content which is restricted on the social media, if you are posting that, so immediately that content will be captured by the AI system and you will get a response like you should stop posting these kind of content or maybe that thing should be blocked, right? Uh, hate speeches, some, something like that. So variety, variety could be 
like data it's not something that I, all the data coming in uh, proper format Regular format it could be like image it could be semi structured data some json format xml format right some structured data so if i'll talk about uh, structured data which is nice and proper formatted data in excel you can consider that structured data data in a table uh, in tables proper formatted some data is coming in json okay with parent and multi child relation or could be a single child relation it depends single node or multi node data and that we need to process that that's another data and a structure is something which is quite fragmented doesn't have relation to each other what is hadoop so hadoop is basically it was created in 2005 by dog cutting and mike cafrela who was working on yahoo at that time so google was doing some training on the file system google file system so this is how the concept called hdfs came in picture okay and hadoop is open source framework for distribution storage and processing large set of data across cluster of commodity hardware commodity hardware is nothing but the hardware which can run all these information like if you are running your laptop it's a your commodity hardware right <clears throat> So Hadoop was released an open source project in 2006 and became top label Apache project in 2009. So till 2009, it was gained too much popularity and implemented in each and every company out there in the market. For each and every company means those company who are generating huge data. Okay, so it was adopted by wide range of organization, including major tech like Facebook, Twitter. Uh, yahoo netflix all these okay now currently hadoop release 3.3 uh, version but popularity of spark uh, overtake all those uh, legacy applications so people prefer to take uh, spark over hadoop but we cannot say hadoop is not there hadoop is there in the market and it's running with some applications so maybe in some other session i'll i'll cover about by map reduce so there, there are two things you need to write two program one is mapper another is reducer to get the uh, real output of the data you are processing in hadoop but with the spark you overcome with all these information you just write a rdd whenever you've done you just take a action and you can you can generate the data so you're not supposed to uh, and do something for each and every program you can do your all your stuff then finally you can find out so these are the tools uh, with hadoop you need to uh, process whenever so let's say for data ingestion streaming you need to get apache kafka or and it's a flume flume is also for data ingestion in real time and a scoop is for all uh, data and there are some uh, storage you can see storage is hadoop sdfs hadoop file system okay what are the resource manager there are resource manager you can choose either yarn and mesos okay there are options you can you can choose from that and then uh, processing through the map reduce either you need to write map reduce program or you can write a spark program okay to process that for no sql you can use apache hways Okay, for Hive Meta Store, you are creating Hive Meta Store in Databricks. We will be discussing later. For this is for analytical purpose. For data warehousing concept, you can use Hive. Okay, Pig is another uh, tool which is required for scripting. Uzi is for scheduling or maybe to creating a batch or kind of right. Zookeeper is like a coordinator between each other. So it's a quite fragmented. For running the entire stuff, you need all these things. Okay. So now, then in 2010, the Spark came in picture. Now, what is Spark? Spark was developed in 2009. Okay. By Matei Jaharia. Okay. Jaharia, who was then a graduate student in the UC Berkeley. Spark was developed to address the limitation of MapReduce. So as we discussed, MapReduce has some limitation like you need to write a program and then you need to write a reducer for that. 
every time you need so let's say you have uh, 10 process you need to run 10 times to get output for each and everything you cannot do something like you done and then you can uh, run at last and get the output so this is this is quite tedious and for doing a simple job you need to write too much code i'll show you the example in later session okay this is just for introduction because everybody asking like what is the exact difference what is the history and the relation so the this is how the relation okay hadoop using spark but spark is i mean a separate framework itself so databricks using spark only okay so spark was developed to address the limitation of mapreduce and the batch processing system used in apache hadoop so this is supported only batch processing system for streaming or real time data there was too much difficulty in apache hadoop so spark is an open source distribution computer system that allows for faster more flexible data processing through in-memory computing so in-memory computing means this was not the in-memory computation here uh, you doesn't require too much ram to process your big data you just write a code and then you can run and that run through the uh, uh, hard disk it's it's not something it's going to consume your memory but here or uh, whatever you are doing you are doing each and everything in memory and keeping all those tasks in memory until you do the action okay so i'll be discussing more on this so spark was released in 2010 and become top level apache project in 2014 because in 2014 what happened all these companies spark has gained widespread adoption in the industry because it's giving only single player solution so just consider you are going to one shop okay and then you are getting only let's say staples and another shop you are getting milk another shop you are getting breads another shop you are getting something else right do you prefer those kind of uh, options or in one shop you will get all the option you will choose that so that that's what happened here apache spark keep each and everything at one place okay without going to another dependent tool and they provide each and everything here only then it's uh, adopted by all these company in 2014 uh, in 2013 itself basically uh, databricks came in picture and databricks came in picture in the way like this guy uh, working on a spark project this guy uh, founded this Databricks in 2013. In 2014, they integrated all these things with Databricks. The Spark is integrated with Databricks. Okay. And then it went to the public cloud provider. So in 2014, Amazon uh, provide the integration with Databricks. Amazon started working with Databricks on this. So you can uh, spin up Databricks with Amazon cluster AWS and you can run your Databricks. In 2015, it is started with Microsoft also, the Azure cloud, and in later 18, uh, it associated with Google cloud. Okay, all these cloud platform is started giving the service of Databricks. So Databricks is basically a third party tool, which is associated with this cloud. The reason is, you can, you can run the cloud, I mean Databricks separately also, you can, take your own uh, maybe private cloud and you can put the databricks but these databricks all three cloud provider provide this service to spin up the databricks and they will provision all the underlying infrastructure for you okay so that you can get all these information associated with the tools okay and as of now we are having a spark 3.3 i guess and it's keep on adding so what are the features of spark you, you guys know about like it provides speed because it's doing all the in-memory computing okay powerful caching means uh, you can do the caching so let's say if your data is uh, used in multiple execution you can cache that data so that it's not going to read again and again it's there in cache and you can directly do that deployment is easy 
because you directly create a notebook and immediately if you just want to deploy or switch to the uh, environment it's it's quite easy real time you can do the real time also so let's say you are getting data from sensor some iot sensor you are getting data from geolocations you are so just consider your uber car okay or just consider you are running on any um, bike or taxi or you are getting a uh, putting all those information uh, your geolocation okay how, how the system get the real time information they get the real time information through the sensors okay so sensor push the data to some iot hub or maybe uh, kinesis firehose or maybe through the kafka okay server they pull the information from the sensor and then polyglot means you can use more than one uh, language like you can run r you can run scala you can run PySpark, sql okay scalable because you can uh, easily scale and down scale uh, on the cluster side so that's we'll be discussing in some other session because i'll be uh, recording the entire session for uh, databricks certification associate and the professional both so you will see in that okay what the feature spark can provide the batch processing real-time processing stream analytics machine learning interactive uh, sql and how the spark architecture is look like so in top layer it has all these uh, spark sql streaming machine learning library and let's say graph computation what is core core is a spark engine these are the resource manager okay the standalone scheduler kubernetes and mesos and yard okay so whatever is there you can choose but in databricks it's it's by default the databricks is standalone you can use the databricks schedule manager okay so you are not supposed to configure all these information you just need to create a databricks account and then you can go and create things okay all, all done now what is databricks so this is the guy behind the databricks the story of databricks begin in 2009 with this guy okay then the name is uh, maybe you can, you can uh, pronounce in some other way it's i would say it's a matei okay who is the graduate student from uc berkeley and this guy keep on adding things and uh, uh, these guys working on spark and then later they introduced databricks in the market databricks company founded in 2013 by creator of apache spark okay this caught attention in several companies like aws okay and some other company which is uh started working on the spark but amazon aws um, is the one who initially offer their platform to them okay okay so what is exactly databricks so databricks is something collaborative workspace scalable data processing system automated machine learning all these provides at a single place it's 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 uh not over yet there are options there are unified data analytics system unified means all these information you will get at one place okay integration and security so you can integrate with multiple applications you can ingest data from multiple application you can do the stream analytics all these things you can do okay so uh, basically this uh, information is just for the clarification most of the folks ask on the trainings like what is the difference in all these spark hadoop and databricks so this is how uh, things happen big data came in picture then hadoop came hadoop as a tool came in 2005 to overcome the uh, situation of big data and provide the solution so that's it for this session so probably i'll be recording all those uh, videos for you guys on the database certification preparation for associate and professional both and you will see the series soon thank you for now and yeah uh, if you like the content then please subscribe my channel to get more update on that see you